Hi, this is Mike from the Excel Trainer and in this short video I'm going to show you how to record a macro and store it in the Personal Macro Workbook. I'm using Excel 2011 for Mac but the process is similar if you're using Excel for Windows. In the following scenario I'm an HR manager and each week I receive an Excel file containing a list of employees currently employed at my company. The data is extracted from an HR system and emailed to me, so what I receive is unformatted and difficult to read. So each week I spend a few minutes formatting the data to make it easier to read. The sort of things that I might do are things like making the font bigger and maybe making the column widths wider. So things are easier to read. Let me just undo that for later in the demonstration. There must be an easier way to do this and of course there is. I can automate the process using a macro. The question is where do I store the macro? I can't store the macro in the file that I receive from the HR system because by definition it's a new file that I receive each time. I could create a blank workbook and store the macro in it and then each week I could copy and paste the data from the workbook that I get from the HR system into this blank workbook, run the macro to format the data and save the file under a different name. The problem with that is if the macro needs updating, I'd need to go back and update it in every workbook that had already been created. From a best practice point of view, if you have a macro that you want to use on more than one file, it's better to store the macro in the personal macro workbook. Now here's the file that I've been sent this week. To create the macro, select Tools, Macro, Record New Macro. I need to give the macro a name. Now it must start with a letter and have no spaces in it. So the name I'm going to give it is Tidy the Data. If I want to assign it a keyboard shortcut, I can do, and then the macro can be run with Option, Command, and the letter I choose. So let me go for Option, Command, and T. And I want to store it in the Personal Macro Workbook, which is the default. I could choose to store it in a new workbook. I could choose to store it in this workbook, but I'm going to choose to store it in the Personal Macro Workbook. Once I've done that, I click OK. And I'm now recording. It tells me down at the bottom that I'm currently recording. So what I do is I record the tasks that I want to automate. So for example, let's select those uh, headings. Let's just select all the headings and maybe make them bigger, make them bold, change the text color to white and change the background color to black. And then I want to uh, change the column widths of all the columns. So let's select all the columns, point my mouse in the groove between any two of the column letters and double click. Reselect A1 just so that we've got the uh, cursor in A1 when the macro has finished and the macro is now complete. To stop the recording, I go up to Tools, Macro, Stop Recording. I'm now going to save this file, although I don't need to because the macro has been stored in the personal macro workbook, but obviously um, I would want to save this file to keep the changes to the data. So I'll save that file and I will then close this file down. I'm then going to exit from Excel and it'll ask me if I want to save the changes that I've made to the personal macro workbook. Now, obviously I do want to do that because if I don't, I'll lose the macro. So I will click save. That has shut down Excel. I'm now going to open another Excel file. It's the one that I received from the HR system last week. And I want to run the macro uh, rather than manually formatting the cells. Now I could go to Tools, Macro, and then Macros, and then just click the Run button. Or I can press the shortcut key, which was Command, Option, Shift, and T. And there we go. Very, very quickly, it runs the macro.